and thirteenths. I know about where the other intercept is, probably somewhere 10, 15, somewhere around there for the x-coordinate, but we want to know exactly where it's touching the x-axis, not uh, somewhere over there. So we're going to find the x-intercept algebraically. So it doesn't matter what form you use. They're all, all the forms are the same. They all tell you the exact same information, just in a slightly different format. So I'm not going to tell you to use point slope, slope intercept, uh, form, whichever you want to use is fine. Uh, so I'm just going to use the one that's right there on the board. This, uh, I think that's slope intercept. So we'll go with that form right there, just because it's convenient and written right there. So we got negative one third x plus eleven thirds. So I'm setting y equal to zero. Okay, so fractions suck. How can I get out of fraction land quickly? Yep, or I can multiply by one number. Let's multiply by three. So nice uh, here because the denominator is the same, so I don't have to do any thinking. And if one denominator was two, I'd have to multiply by six, but this will get me right out of fractions easily. So 0 times 3 is 3. And add x to the other side. And we got x, equal, x equals 11. So that is the x value of our x-intercepts. And I can label right there, that's now 11. So you're going to notice that on the quizzes especially, in the midterms, I'm going to give you questions that have multiple parts. So I'd have you graph and find the intercepts. And if you, uh, while you're doing this, if things don't match up, like let's say I got, for some reason, negative 11. Well, that's going to definitely not appear anywhere close to where my x-intercept appeared on my graph. So this is what I call your spidey sense. will hopefully go off right here, and you'll be thinking, oh, something's not right. They both can't be true. It can't be on the positive side of the x-axis and also negative at the same time. So if that happens, you want to go and look back through your work, and hopefully you'll be able to figure out somewhere you uh, made some mistake and correct it. So the next uh, properties we're going to look at is parallel and perpendicular lines. I'll start out with parallel. So we'll have two lines. I'll use the first one. I'll use subscripts of one for my slope and my y-intercept. My second line I'll use m2 and b2. So if you know these two lines are parallel, what will be, uh, what about these two lines will uh, be the same? The slope. So if they're going to be parallel, they better have the exact same slope. So parallel lines have the same slope. So we'd have m1 equals m2. So that's parallel. Now what about perpendicular? Lines. All right, and they will have, so they'll be which ones? Yeah, so they'll have, uh, one way to think about it is inverted slopes or uh, reciprocal slopes, but they'll also be negative. So opposite So they'll be the yeah, opposite signs uh, and reciprocals. So mathematically, that means m1 is one, uh, negative 1 over m2. So that will be the relationship. Uh, if you're not into fractions, you could write it as 
m1 times m2 equals negative 1. So whichever way you want to think about it, completely uh, they are equal. So you can either think of if I multiply the slopes, I get negative 1, or if I uh, one slope is the negative reciprocal of the other. So those are parallel and perpendicular. And we're going to do a few problems here with these. Actually, before we do this, let's write out the general form of a line. So general linear form is AX plus by equals c. So this is called the general linear form. The reason it's called the general linear form is because it will, uh, any line can be written in this form. There are certain types of lines that cannot be written in any of the other forms that we wrote down. So if we think about way, way, way back at the beginning, somewhere up here, where we got our slope. What are we assuming? Just look at our computation of slope right here, where we have the m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. What type of values would make this fraction undefined? So if, if what is 0? So if they're both 0, that would definitely make the denominator 0. But there's a lot more x values, x1, x2 values, that would make this 0. 1. So they're both 1. Or what can we, is there something we can say a little bit more generally? Any, any values that make the denominator 0. Yeah, so we can write this down. Uh, so let's write when. Yeah, so it's basically going to be, so we'll do this algebraically. This is when x1 minus x2 is not 0. So if that denominator is 0, we have undefined. So if I just do a tiny bit of algebra, let's add x1 to the other side. It's a little strange. We're operating on a non-equation or on a unequal, using a not equal sign. So x1 minus x2 is not 0 exactly when x2 is not the same as x1. So if your two x coordinates are the same, you're going to be dividing by 0, is what this says. What does it look like if your x coordinates are the same? That means your two points are going to be directly above and below each other. So they'd have the exact same x coordinate. And what type of line do we call this special line right here? Well, the slope's undefined. This would be a vertical line. They're straight up and down. So straight up and down line, or vertical line, has got no slope. Its slope is undefined. So any, any linear form you try to write that has slope in it, it's not going to work. So vertical line's never going to work in any of the, the forms that we wrote down before. So now we'll scroll back down. So we didn't worry about that before, because I just didn't give you an example where the two x coordinates were the same. So we didn't have to worry about that before. So vertical. Lines have undefined slope. and cannot and it cannot be written 
any of the forms that have a slope in them, you can't write vertical lines like that. So anytime you got an M in there, it's not going to work out for a vertical line. So let's think about vertical lines and what their equations might be. So here's our coordinate plane, also known as R2. Everybody's favorite hero from Star Wars. I'm going to use a different color for this vertical line. It looks just like an axis. So we'll go blue. And let's say this is happening over at uh, 3. So what would the equation of this vertical line be? I know some of you have seen this vertical line equations before. So is it going to be x equals 3 or y equals 3? So it's going to be x equals 3. So y can be anything it wants. There's no restrictions. Go up and down as far as it wants. So there's going to be no, no restrictions on y, but x cannot move at all. x has to be 3. So our equation for this line would be x equals 3. So all vertical lines can be written as x equals a for some a value. So for some constant a. So we're going to write in general linear form, ax plus by equals c. So all you have to do in general linear form, if I want x equals 3, a is 1, b is 0, and c is 3. So there's our vertical line written in general linear form. Now, of course, you can reduce it to x equals 3 but you can write a vertical line in general linear form. Next example, we're going to find the slope of this line. Now it's a line because it's in general linear form, so it's going to be a line. How do I know it's not a vertical line? What would indicate that this is not a vertical line? Yeah, so if it's a vertical line, it better not have any y in here. So if it's a vertical line, you'd not see, you'd see a zero here. So it's not going to be a vertical line. How in the world do I figure out the slope? So I could subtract 2x. Basically, if I solve for y, I will pretty much be looking at the slope. So what I'm going to do is solve for y. So find the slope by solving for y. You can go ahead and solve for y yourself, or you can watch me do it. So what, what algebra mistake did I make here? Yeah, I didn't really divide the entire right side by 3. I just divided part of the right side by 3. So I'm supposed to divide both terms on the right side by 3. So it'll be also 6 over 3, which reduces to 2. And now I can see the slope, and that's the negative 2 thirds. It's coefficient right in front of x. So you can go from general linear back into slope-intercept. As long as you don't have vertical line, 
you'll figure out your vertical line real quick because there will be no y and you can't solve for something that's not in the equation to begin with. So if you try to solve for y, you'll figure out pretty quick you can't do it. So there's our slope. All right, let's get our intercepts. Now you could absolutely use the form that we just got and plug in x and zero is zero and find your y-intercepts, plug in y is zero and find your x-intercepts. Uh, so let's go ahead, instead of using the slope intercept, let's go and use the general linear form to find the x-y-intercepts. So we'll do x first, set y equal to zero, and I want you to specifically use the general linear form. Once you get your x-intercept, find your y-intercepts. So any algebra questions on getting 3, 0 for the x-intercept and 0, 2 for the y-intercepts? All right, so general linear form is actually a little bit easier to get your intercepts than the point-slope form. They're all relatively easy to manipulate. The algebra <coughs> is just linear algebra, so it's pretty fast and easy to do. So that's general linear form. Let's do one more example where we go from uh, point slope back to general linear form. So turn this uh, y equals 4x over 7 minus 2 into um, the general linear form. And there's not one specific general linear form. There's infinite general linear forms as long as you, uh, I just got to this one I put in the box first without doing much work. And then if I want to get out of fraction land, I can multiply by 7 and get down to here to the last one. So it's up to you. Where do you want to leave it? You don't have to have a certain uh, coefficient in front of x or y. So I could have gone with one in front of the y and then had negative 4 7 or if I want to avoid fractions, I could write this one on the bottom with no fractions at all. Did you start with the y equal, did you start with the um, slope-intercept form? Yeah, we started the uh, y equals mx plus, plus b form. So we're going to do our last few problems with lines, and we'll go back to the uh, perpendicular and parallel. So we'll do parallel first. So I want an equation of line parallel to <coughs> 4x plus 3y equals 12, uh, passing 
through. We'll make it easy. We'll just go through one one. So what you know about parallel means these lines are going to have the same slope. Except I can't see the slope directly in this line right here. So what I have to do is solve for y. That will show me the slope. And once I have the slope, I can find the point slope form or slope intercept form. So go ahead and find the slope first by solving for y. And unfortunately, we're out of time, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so we got to go. But uh, we'll pick up here on Monday.